So I'm like, um, waiting on my dear brother Alfonso to jump on and then we can go ahead and get started. Those that don't know, we actually, uh, this is the first uh, Facebook Live broadcast of Nation Town TV, uh, hosted by Brother Alfonso X and myself, Brother Landon X. Just waiting on Brother Alfonso to make himself known.
ahead and get Brother Alfonso X on the line. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, soldier. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I hear you. All right. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. This is the first. Uh, this is the initial Nation Town uh, television episode. We're going to do this periodically uh, based on demand. Uh, and the, uh, the idea of this basically just comes from, you know, like many brothers, you and I just sciencing up, you know, whether it be, you know, during one of our study groups or uh, MGT posts. And, man, I just got the idea that, man, some of these, some, I wish I can go back and uh, pluck some of those conversations we've had in the past and, <laughs> and put it online. Some of the stuff right. is, is too hot for Facebook, but you know. Come on, real hot topic. <laughs> yes, sir. But uh, the topic that we that we're going to do today uh, was handpicked by brother Alfonso X, and that is uh, Colin Kaepernick. Uh, is he a hero or is it just hype? So, right. You know, and as far as the intro to Nation Town TV, you know, it's devoted to genuine mathematical you know, uh, distribution of news, opinions, and facts. You know, the whole idea of Nation Town came from our beloved Western Regional Student Minister, Tony Muhammad. And uh, Brother Alfonso X and myself, we just trying to lay down the first bricks of that movement. Uh, we're doing it with the fruit market uh, that's on site at Muhammad Mosque number 27. And, and this is, I guess you could say this is the, the online version of that. Yes, Go sir. Ahead. Go ahead, yes, Nation sir. Town TV. Come on now. Live <laughs> yes, sir. We got our brother Samad, you know, in the building. Just uh so I'm just... like brother Samad, brother Jabbar, brother Deontay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and jump on, get started since we got a few viewers uh to get right. it kicked off. I'm gonna let brother Alfonso get it started first and foremost. Yes, you sir. You know, first of all, let me just say the title. Colin Kaepernick, is it, you know, is he a hero or is it just hype? I don't want people to confuse that for disrespect for our brother. Uh, you know, the, the title was used first and foremost to catch your attention. And then second of all, it's, it's a valid, it's a valid uh, question. You know, uh, me personally, I would, I would, I wish I would have went back and changed it to, you know, right. Colin Kaepernick, hero, hype, or was it hijack? Because at this point, oh. you know, it seems like they're trying to hijack the actual movement. But I'm going to go ahead and let our, our dear brother, Brother Alfonso X, uh, hard-driving, fast-rising soldier. You know, we don't Perfect. salute outside, so I'm not going to give the brothers, you know, actual uh, uh, title. But I will say that he is a, a hard-driving soldier, fast-rising. And my beloved brother, I, I've learned so much from him. Uh, but dear brother Alfonso X. Go ahead, dear brother. Yes, sir. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, sir. I, first, I would like to open up in the name of Allah, who appeared to us in the person, the master Fard Muhammad, who That's came right. down from his hiding place, traveled 9,000 miles to resurrect his lost found nation, the members, the nation of Islam. I That's also right. like to bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is his first begotten That's of the right. dead who raised up another one among us. And there's none other than the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. I'd like to greet you all in peace. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. Now let's get to it. You know, first question, you know, yes, I mean, all of them is a hot topic, you know, but now we got Brother Landon X. Collins on the, in the hot seat. Yes, the sir. Yes, sir. Brother Landon, Come on now. Is, is is this whole Colin Kaepernick, you know, is he a hero or is he just hype? Well, you know, I, me personally, I got to say just for me, just for me on a personal level, you know, he, the brother was right on time. And I do feel as always, you know, a lot intervenes in everything, even when it comes off as something negative. 
But I, right. I definitely know for a fact that Allah is intervening in this for the simple fact that I've been kind of waiting for our athlete brothers to step up the way that the brothers stepped up in the past, you know, whether it was raising the fist at the Olympics, whether it was our brother Jim Brown and, and Muhammad Ali, you know, and it's, and, it's, and it's not ironic. I almost use that word ironic, but, you know, it's beautiful that in the two most talked about instances of uh, black power being flexed in sports in the last 60 years, they both have involved Islam with Muhammad right. Ali and, as, and and now with Colin Kaepernick. And we're going to get into a little bit how the Islam connection and that a lot of you already know, but we're going to go a little bit deeper yeah, uh, if like, time yeah, permits. I like a lot more about that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But for me, I was just I was just happy to see a brother stand. And really, it caught me off guard. You know, I follow football. You know, it was, you know, I joke with people. Football was my religion prior to Islam. And, right. you know, and, and if I had to pick, if you if I could get into an 85 DeLorean and go back, you know, 15 years and you told me that something like this would happen and and you asked me to pick the athlete that would do right. it or even just five years ago, I would have never guessed uh, Brother Colin Kaepernick. But uh, it just kind of came out of nowhere. But it was beautiful. However, I do feel like the uh, the, the movement has been uh uh, uh, hijacked in a sense in the actual oh, meaning. So. Give, give, give us an example. Well, you know, first of all, you know, the first weekend of the NFL season where you saw, you know, I am fully participating in, in the boycott uh, of not watching. I haven't watched one snap of NFL Likewise. football Likewise. this year. But, you know, I did see the footage that was circulating around Facebook of, you know, the interlocked arms and you know, and that kind of thing, the coaches and, you know, and all that. I think I saw a referee involved. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. And, right, right. and you know, and, and, and they're talking about everything, but what Colin Kaepernick initially did this for, you know, I haven't, right. you know, I haven't heard and I can't full disclosure. I can't say that I'm sitting up watching NFL, uh, you know, NFL pregame on Sundays, you know, I'm, I'm at the mosque, I'm on post. So I, I don't know what's going on there. So I but, can't claim can, that I go ahead. Can you, can you explain to the viewers why the protest is started to kind of give those an idea who don't know? Well, Colin Kaepernick from, from his own mouth and I'll paraphrase it. The brother is trying to give uh, a spotlight to the, uh, to the, to the, to the oppression and the injustice that not only have we been dealing with for the last 462 years, but particularly in the last five to 10 years, everything from Mike right. Brown to, to Trayvon, you know, to Alton Sterling, you know, unfortunately the list goes on and on, but you know, nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about it in sports. You know, we're talking about a sport that's 80% black, you know, a, a right. league that would, that would go on under, and go out of business overnight if just half of those players walked away. You know, maybe right. even if just a quarter of them walked away, especially if all of the best players walked away, you know, the top 20 players walked away, nobody would watch this league. But we're 80% of the league, but nobody's talking about what's happening to black people. So Colin right. Kaepernick took it upon himself to make a stance, and that segues into, into a very important my point. Next he, question. He started my next out. Question. Yes, sir. Right. He real quick. He started out sitting down, but then right. he started to kneel, and and I think that but, might but relate see, to your next question. That's the segue to my next question. That's yes, what sir. I want to ask you. What is the origin of where taking a knee came from? Can you please explain that to us and the viewers? Uh, yes, sir. As far as I know, uh, right. The brother. Well, I know this for a fact. He started off just sitting down on the bench. He started right. off on the bench, and when he was on the bench, you know, that caught a lot of eyes and attention. But then he had a conversation from a, a white individual who is a uh, military veteran who basically explained that, you know, just sitting down was kind of disrespectful to a sense just for him personally. And he suggested right. to Brother Colin that he take a knee instead because taking a knee technically is not offensive uh, to, you know, the, uh, 
the the the, the Star Spangled Banner or just to the country or to the flag. And so he right. decided to switch it up to taking a knee. And uh, I think it was also, and, and this is just my opinion, I think it was also strategic by Brother Colin because one thing they were trying to do with him when he first sat down was what you see them doing with Brother Marshawn Lynch right now. And you had right, staffers right. on the team huddled around him to cover him up. So he took a step closer to the sideline and took a knee, which is a lot mm. harder to cover him up. So I think yeah, he found a, a, a yeah he found a good medium, you know, in between you know not necessarily disrespecting the country or the flag or the military, but also putting his uh, protests on the forefront. Right, good, good, good teaching. Now I got another question. Yes, sir. So what do you what do you think about President Elect Donald Trump's words when he called the players SOBs? Okay. He, well he, it really got controversial. Like my man went up there and he said it boldly and like he didn't give two cares about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yes, sir. Well that was kind of a uh a Freudian slip uh by you, brother Alfonso. You said president elect. You know, right. which is which is normally what they say when when he's not sworn right. in yet. But that's right. you know that's kind of a good point anyway because it's still a lot of questions about if he was actually elected. But that's a whole nother right. topic for another yes, day. That's a whole nother topic, yes, sir. But the thing that that jumped out at me first and foremost when he said uh, uh, "sons of bitches" is the fact that his his rhetoric was so much softer when that Charlottesville incident went down. And he even went right. so far as to say that there were some good people on the white supremacist side of that whole conflict. And he didn't call right. them sons of bitch. He didn't even literally, he didn't even make any sharp statements at all. And we know this is a, we, this man just been president for five minutes, <laughs> but we already know he does not hold his tongue. But the one time he held his tongue and the one time he came soft, was when it was in regards to Charlottesville, particularly the white supremacist side of the situation. So for him to come out so hard against players who are doing nothing but taking a knee, I mean, if you watch football, right. they take they take knees throughout the whole game. You know, when they're you know on a fair catch or when they take a knee on a, on a touchback on a kickoff, but all they're doing that's that's the most you know nonviolent you know, a uh, uh, non-offensive way to handle anything is to take a knee. But that offended him so much that he called them sons of bitches. But when it came to uh, Charlottesville, you know, they were some pretty good guys. So that, that right. says a lot about his, his mindset, but also says a lot about his strategic uh, situation. Because in politics, they have something called your base. Those are the people that are gonna that are going to vote for you you know, rain, hail, sleet, or snow, unless you turn on them and you need them to have a shot. His base is uh, white supremacist minded, whether they admit it or not, white supremacist minded right. white males. So right. that's his base. You know, he would get 20% of the vote if it wasn't for them. You know, he'd get blown and, out of the water. And, and you so know, he it's needs sad them. because he makes such a hard stance when you when you're dealing with people of color, you know what I mean? He yes, makes sir. such a hard stance, but when any when there's anybody that looks like himself, he's silent. You know what I mean? Silent. So we know that there's some bias up in there. You Come know, on. he's a he's a he's the president for his people. He's Come not on. just president for the American people, but he's just president for his own people. You know what I mean? He makes yes, it uh, clearly obvious. But I wanted yes, to sir. ask you another question uh, real quick. Yes, sir. You know, I got some questions so, too for you, brother. You, you, okay, you, you, yes, you the sir. star of this show, brother. <laughs> oh man, we both stars, man. Let me. Man, okay, let me ask life. you this. Mm -hmm. What does it say about um, when Minister Farrakhan exposed America's hypocrisy when he revealed the flag code? That's perfect because that segues into something I was gonna, I was gonna play for our for our viewers. Uh, yeah. You know, the minister is always on the forefront of truth. And he exposed that perfectly in his uh, in his monumental uh, lecture, uh, Separation of Death. And, right. you know, it just shows, you know, just how, 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 how you know, hip hypocritical, you know, these beasts are. And I do mean beasts, 
You know, if you're if you're a Caucasian and you don't think the way they think, well, congratulations, pat yourself on the back. I'm not talking about you, but if you if you are uh, sympathetic to to the way these these beasts act, then I am talking about you, regardless of your skin color. But right. uh, but the minister did a beautiful job of breaking down scientifically the way he teaches us to deal with actual facts, and he dealt with actual facts using this this beast's own law own provisions and you know it remind me of david in the scripture where in the end he cut off goliath's head with his own sword so right. that's you know that's the feeling i got when i saw the minister you know uh lay it down the way he did and what i want to do real quick brother you asked me a beautiful question as far as the real reason of uh colin kaepernick's protest and and i want the people the the, the viewers to hear it from the minister's mouth and I just hope the audio is clear enough. Is that all right with you there, brother? Yes, sir. Okay, one second. Let me make sure that it's it's ready to go. And let me know if there's if there's any distortion or if you, you have any uh issues hearing it. Here we go. Yes, sir. But they just wanted to draw attention to what was suffering under the flag. That's right. And the police that shot us down, they got a flag somewhere on their uniform. We have some distortion. When we go to court, uh -huh. the flag is there. We can't get no justice. No, 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 no justice. No, come on, come on. My son's father-in-law. Can you hear it now? Fought in World War II. Can you hear it, brother? And he saw his buddy shot down, blown to pieces on Normandy Beach. So every time he sees the flag, he stands. Yeah, I can't, I can't make any of the words out. Okay, yes, sir. But the minister was just pointing out pretty much what I said, how, you know, uh, you know, it's about the fact that not only are we going through a great deal of oppression, but every police shooting, every police, every 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 uh, every uh, instance of police brutality, you know, they did that with the American it's, flag on their on their sleeve. Yeah, I mi I missed a lot of that, brother Landon, because uh, there's a kind of an echo behind you. Okay, how we sound it right ahead, now? Can you repeat that? It sounds better. Okay, but yeah, the minister was just pointing out that you know. The, the the real reason was to bring light on the oppression that we're going through, all of which has taken place under the flag. And and even police officers, every police officer I've ever seen on their uniform, there's an American flag right there on their sleeve. So they literally are wearing this nation's uh, pride and joy on their sleeve when they do everything they do. You know, when they go through our neighborhoods like the Gestapo, you know, every time they pull us over, you know, for driving while being black, everything they right. do, they do it in the name of the United States of America. So we have more right than anybody to to protest that. And really, anybody has the right to protest anything uh, uh, that's that's tyranny. This this country was supposed to be built on an, uh, a a uh, a belief of anti, you know, tyranny. So right. Americans, it's, there's nothing more American than protesting tyranny. You know, when right. you look at the history of this country. Yes, sir. Right. Good teacher. Um, I have another question. Yes, so sir. why is the freedom of protest so important to America and its citizens? You know, that's one of the big things that separates a so-called, and I want to really put an emphasis on that, a so-called democracy from right. a so-called dictatorship. You know, some right. of what, what we've been taught are dictatorships are not really dictatorships. And what we've been taught are democracies are not necessarily democracies. But, you know, when we have the right to protest and not end up dead or end up shot or end up being, you know, blackballed, then that's 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 when you know you're in a real democracy. And that really proves that we're not in a real democracy because right. so many leaders, even presidents have been shot for standing up against the real puppet masters, you know, of this nation's government. And, you know, we all know, well, we all should know who that is. And there's nobody that you see on CNN. 
you know, it's it's the, the shadow government behind the government. But people have right. been shot. People have been blackballed of all colors and races. Right. Good you know, you know, so that that, you know, that really is a blessing. That's why I really know that Allah, Allah is, you know, is behind everything. But you definitely see his fingerprints on this because he's exposing, you know, Allah himself is exposing, you know, this country that has always claimed to be a democracy, claimed to be free. But as soon right. that, but they want to cherry pick who can exercise that democracy and exercise that right. freedom, you know, and right. that's the biggest hypocrisy about America is that, you know, it is, it, it, you know, the freedom that it, that it boasts of is only reserved for certain people. Good teaching. Good teaching. Now, did you have any questions for me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, um, one thing I heard now, this, this actually came from the field, you know, pushing, you know, the FCN. If you remember the first uh, issue that we had, I think we've had three, uh, maybe two issues. I know it's been more than one issue with Brother Colin on the front. But the first one that, uh, that highlighted the brother, you know, when this whole controversy, so-called controversy started, you know, I was pushing the FCN and a random brother. You know, as you know, he made a comment that really got my my mind moving. And it was when I first yeah. found out that, you know, Brother Colin is dating a uh, a Muslim, you know, a, right. uh, a a Muslim female who uh, yeah. I believe is is also black or Arab or both. And um, and he basically asked me well, made a comment that this is not about. Colin Kaepernick's own personal conviction of his people, but right. more so another sign, or just another situation of a man being whipped by his woman. Right. And he he didn't use just that word whipped. He put the P in front of the whip. I ain't uh, yeah, y'all yeah, know what I'm talking, know what about. talking about. You yeah, know. So that's my question to you, brother Alfonso. Do you think that it's just, you know, not that it's a bad thing. It's beautiful when a woman comes in a man's life and a man comes in a woman's life and turns their mind to something positive. But do you right. think that that is, do you think she just is an accent to what he was already, what he already had in his heart? Or do you think he's just, you know, this is just his way of impressing her? Because, you know, that's what we do. We try to impress women, especially when we court, you know, when we're trying to, 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 to get on their better side. If we know that they like fancy cars, we'll spend all our money on a car. If we know they like nice clothes, we'll, we'll spend all our money on the clothes. And it's a lot of sisters, and we know this very well in the Nation of Islam. It's a lot of very conscious, woke, militant sisters out there who won't give you a second look if you don't know anything about, you know, the, the struggle. So right. maybe he ran into her and he said, man, let me do my homework on the struggle. And now he's using his platform to, to really impress her. Or do you think this is, this is something that's genuine? Um, you know, just as we had taught, you know, cause I heard you say that she's a Muslim. Yes, right? sir. She's a Muslim, right? Yes, sir. Well, the yes, duty sir. of a Muslim is to free the slaves. You know Come what on. I mean? So Come I on. believe, in my opinion, that the first thing that she did was free the brother's mind. You know mm, what I mean? Because okay. Minister Farrakhan has repeatedly said, as far as our athletes, our musicians, our artists, our actors, our high-paid slaves. So the first mm. thing that sister did was free the brother's mind because only the light of truth can... Come on. Can, Build a, a person with a certain type of ambition and love to want to sacrifice everything that he has. Yes, you sir. know, yes, knowledge. Sir. You know what I'm saying? Of what you're doing, because I don't, I don't think the brother is blindly doing what he's doing to appease uh, 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 his girlfriend. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Only, tr yes. only truth can can make you lay down your life. Yes, sir. For for a cause, and I think although the brother, I think by the brother taking the knee, the brother laid down his life. You know, the brother gave uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars for do for charity. You right. know what I mean? You know, so it, I think it's bigger than a, a man just being you know whipped by a woman because his brother putting his whole livelihood on the line. 
and, yes, and at the same time, it's like in the business that he's in, there's a there's thousands of women lined up at the hotel room as soon as the brother get done uh, uh, for football practice. Good you point. know what I mean? So, so there, you know, so he was already there. There, there was a seed already implanted in his brain, and then the light, the you know, the light of truth hit that seed, and uh, you know, and the brother, the brother had a revelation. You know what yes, I mean? Sir. So I think it's bigger than just I think some people try to romanticize the whole thing and they don't mm. see the the the, the genuine they don't see that that is a genuine move on that brother's part. So they try to play it down, you know, kind of like what we call throw shade. They was yeah, throwing right, shade right. by just saying, Oh, he just did it for a female, but like, no, you are you that dead to believe that a man could come to a, a realization that, hey, don't nobody care about us. You know what come I mean? On. They murdering us wholesale. You know what I mean? And then, not only, like, if a brother do a drive-by shooting on another brother, you know, he, they, they throwing him under the jail. But the people that murder us, you know, they get a slap on the wrist. You know, they yes, go sir. home, you know, on probation with pay. You know what I mean? Yes, so I th I don't think the brother is that naive. The brother has been to college. You know, he's, yes, you know, he's, so he, he's, he's come from the educated, you know what I mean? So the, to, to kind of throw shade at the brother, I think the brother that asked you that question has a lot of learning to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Beautiful response. Beautiful response. And, and that's, and that, and you know, that's similar to the way I responded to the brother. You know, because I, I use the, an analogy of magnetism, you know, sometimes right. two, two things are just compatible. And like you said, right. you know, you know, the sole, sole purpose of a Muslim is, is, to, is to wake the dead. And, right. you know, she, she attracted something in him, you know, and if right. it wasn't in him, then she could have, you know, her letting him know that that's what she stands for would have been that last conversation. And like you said, right. he would have turned his attention to one of the, you know, the groupies, yeah, it, 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 the it takes, thousands it takes of a groupies. Strong woman, it takes a strong woman to be able to stand firm and hold her ground and get right. the brother to conform to the way she thinks. You feel what right. I'm saying? So she has to be a strong sister, and the truth that she possessed was greater than what he had. But then he right, had right. to bow down and bear witness to what she said and then moved out on that instruction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I totally agree. Now, I have a... Uh, uh, another question for you now yes, one sir. thing that i'm that i'm excited about you know uh i work in the legal field is that the brother right now brother colin is uh he's building a case for collusion and he and he's got a lawyer right. and he's ready to file and charge the national football league with collusion now what i want to do real quick is define that for uh for anybody that's what that's going to watch this or watching it now Collusion is yes, basically secret or illegal cooperation or conspiracy, especially in order to cheat or deceive others. So that's right. what collusion is. And he's actually filing an actual collusion case. So my question right. to you is, it's, it's twofold. One, do you think he'll be successful as, in, in the court of law? Or do you believe there'll be any success, whether it be in the court of public opinion or the court of law? What do you think he's wasting his time, or do you think a collusion case? And again, I want to repeat the the actual definition: secret or illegal cooperation or conspiracy, especially in order to cheat or deceive others. Right. Um, yeah. You know, I'm not a big law guy, but I think because the organization is ran by Jews. I think Roger Goodell uh, yes, might be Jewish, you know, and there are a lot of Jewish uh, owners that are involved and also that are in the courts, right. you know. So I'm not sure if the brother will be able to uh, successfully win that case unless he can prove it without right. a shadow of a doubt. But uh, but to, in the court of public opinion all day, you know what I mean? We, we, we right. know what it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, but, sir. They, but see, it's like it's like Jesus going up against the Roman authorities. Mm. You know what I mean? This yes, brother sir. is going up against basically a government. 
That's you right. understand what I'm saying? He's going up against the government. So we know that there is some conspiracy involved because one black man stands up and all of a sudden this man can't get a job. Mm. Now imagine if uh, all, mostly all the black men stood up. Mm. Come on. Yeah, but I thought, yeah. You're breaking up a little bit, Brother Alfonso. I'm giving it a moment to clear up. Still there? One second, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure our brother Alfonso was still in the building. Looks like our brother dropped off, but we'll get him back on in a moment. Uh, but the question at hand was the collusion case that uh, Brother Colin Kaepernick is filing against the National Football League. And I think it's funny that, and it's not a coincidence, that that didn't get as much uh, press as him actually taking the knee. Uh, because to me, that's more, that's either as important or more important than him taking the knee because he's actually really going after them in their own court of law. And his lawyer, who was Caucasian, uh, has, has made it clear that the brother does have uh, a case, that he actually does have a case. And, and the, the interesting thing for me is going back to the, to the actual definition of collusion, secret or illegal cooperation or conspiracy, especially in order to cheat or deceive others. When you think about that, I mean, that's what this this country and white supremacy has been guilty of uh, for the last 462 years. Secret, illegal cooperation or conspiracy, especially in order to cheat or deceive others. I mean, that's their bread and butter. That's America's bread and butter, especially when it's concerned to the people of God within his borders, the black man and woman. Now, uh... I think our brother is trying to get back online. I'm going to check on our brother Alfonso because he was on fire. One second. And the beautiful thing about this, uh, this actual, uh, this broadcast is that we're basically just kind of sharing with the world the kind of back and forth that, that me and brother Alfonso have on a regular basis, you know, either in telephone conversations or while we're on, or while we're on post. And now we just kind of sharing it with the world. We don't always agree. And if you you know, if y'all, if y'all follow this, you're going to have some, some topics where we don't agree. But we always agree or disagree in the best of manner. But it's always a learning experience for both of us. But I think I got Brother Alfonso back on the line. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Like Salam. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, sir. You all right, brother? Yeah, I'm good, brother. You know, these, these cheap Androids, your phone <laughs> overheats sometimes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I apologize. No problem, dear brother. But yeah. Yeah, just to, you know, quick recap, you know, if a, if a more black men stood up, not because of Donald Trump called the people SOBs, but if they stood up on the principle of justice, yes, sir. then, I mean, they, they wouldn't have a choice but to, you know, keep somebody like Colin Kaepernick, you know? Like, I used to watch movies, like, in prisons. You know, prisons were going to strike in the movie, right? and they're not going to respect you if it's just going to be one person protesting. That's right. You know what I mean? It yes, takes sir. the whole prison. Or, or, or if you, you don't want to comply, you might get stabbed up or something. You know, <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, if y'all ever seen the, the uh, TV show Oz. Yes, sir. You know, but it's the same It's the same principle, just different circumstances. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's, it's just strength in numbers. It's strength in numbers, you know. And that's, and that's one of our biggest problems, you know, when it comes to every uh, leader that we've had right. or every, you know, uh, revolutionary that we've had. We just kind of sit back, um, you know, pun intended, we sit back in the stands eating popcorn and watching to see what's going to happen. 
and then after they die uh, on their post, then we want to wear, you know, a T-shirt with their face on it and, and be on Facebook acting like how much we love them and, and posting their quotes and talking about how great they were. But we don't want to do what they did and sacrifice like they sacrificed. So that's a good point, dear brother. And it brings me to my next point, unless you had a question that you want to. You got an echo in the background, Brother Landon. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Am I good? A, a little bit. Okay. What about now? I think I think once it like start echoing, and like. It... Hello. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, that kind of brings me to my next point, dealing with this whole situation. It reminds me of, you know, one of the worst diseases, in my opinion, that's facing the black community is not cancer, it's not AIDS, you know, it's, it's not even heart disease. To me, the biggest disease right. that we're facing is the white God disease. And, right. and the reason why I call it the white God disease is because when you think about a disease, you know, no matter what kind of disease it is, it can be traced in your DNA. Somebody can prick your finger and do a test on that blood. They can prick your toe. They can get your blood or your saliva, and they can find that disease, traces that disease in everything, uh, every part of your body. And we show that white God mentality in almost everything we do, in the good things we do and in the bad things we do. And, you know, and this is dealing with the way he's protesting by taking a knee. You know, as the minister said, you know, we take a knee when we're prostrating to Allah, when we're prostrating to God. Right. You know, even Christians, they get on their knees. Even, you know, Catholics, when they come into the, the, the temple, you know, they take a knee before they even come down the aisle and sit in the pew. You know, I forgot what they call it, but they take a knee. So, you know, right. but you're doing that for God. You know, you're doing that for a higher power. Right. But and here we are doing it for this white man and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I really want want to play his words. And uh, I know we had a little it wasn't very clear, but I'm going to go ahead and play it. I'm not going to play it for too long, uh, you know, whether right. it's clear or not. But I'm going to go ahead and play it. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told me, he said, you can stand for the flag out of respect for a symbol that governs a sovereign nation. Because that's what you want for yourself one day to fly your flag over a sovereign nation of your own. But we can't pledge no allegiance. Uh, uh, you didn't hear me. That's right. Could you hear that, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to go ahead and finish it out since you can hear it. I can't put my hand over my heart for you, but I'll stand. See, I don't take a knee. But see, in the prayer service, we put the volume up. We kneel to Allah. We right. prostrate to Allah. We ain't got nothing for you like that. Mm. I'm Come not on, going out in the White House and kneel down and throw my fists up like no, sir. Hell with that. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. But yeah, you know the, right. the minister put it perfectly. You know we we and even. If you think about it, and I and you've heard me say this before, a protest, in essence, particularly depending on what you're saying, for example, right. I'm going to use Black Lives Matter, and, and I respect uh, some of the stuff that they do and have done as an organization, but just that name, Black Lives Matter, is essentially a prayer to a white god. You're praying to this right. to, to white supremacy to acknowledge your black life. But, you're, but right. you're made in the image and likeness of God. So why do you even care to, to, to have, uh, uh, you know, acknowledgement from white people? So we've spent the better part of the last hundred years begging and praying to a white God uh, for freedom, for justice and equality. 
when those are all things right. that not only we can get for ourselves, but those are things that you just cannot get from a white man or from white supremacy. They don't have it to give you. You know, this white man right. is not holding the keys to freedom, justice, and equality. And, and the sooner, right. the sooner we, we come to that understanding, we'll, we'll be in so much better shape. But uh, I'm going to give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you have. But then I'm going to break down an interesting point uh, to just kind of uh, further go into what the minister just said about how we don't pledge allegiance to anything but God. Right. I, yeah, I wanted, to I wanted to touch on that topic. Yes, sir. Go ahead, dear brother. Yeah, I was uh I was pushing the final call newspaper on uh Slauson and Western out here in Los Angeles. Yes, sir. And the brother walked up to me and he asked me, you know, about um about you know respecting the American flag and what's going on with Colin Kaepernick. You know, what were my thoughts on that? And I explained to the brother that, you know, it's okay to stand up for the national anthem to honor the flag, right. but in the Nation of Islam, we are taught to never pledge allegiance to the flag. We don't put our right hand over our heart pledging allegiance to that flag because all that we suffered here in the hills and wilderness of North America because of that flag. Yes, you sir. know what I mean? So I think that the brother was doing something uh, uh I think he was doing something brave and he was very courageous in what the brother was doing. And I think he did it in the best manner without trying to be disrespectful toward the flag because there were many people, black and white, lost their lives for uh, behind that flag. Right. So I think what he did was sincere, but I think if it was more guided, you know, uh, it would be more powerful. You know, it would it would be more symbolic. You know, it would be more substance than symbol. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? If he had more guidance coming from the Honorable Minister Lewis Farquhar on, on which on. way to go, I think he would have, I think he would might have stood for the flag, but I don't think he would have crossed his right hand over his heart um, as we are taught to never pledge allegiance to the American flag. Why? Because, But at the same time, honor the flag because we have our own flag. Come on. And soon one day we will have our own nation. That's right. That, uh, that we will want other people to honor our flag. That's right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. All praise. And uh, at this moment, I don't, I don't really have any questions right now. I think if we, if we could take questions from the viewers, okay. you know, I think, you know, we can end it in that fashion. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm trying to get uh, reconnected on my laptop back online. But one thing I do want to point right. out just to uh, to really uh, undergird what the minister was just saying, you know, we're not the only ones. Muslims are not the only ones who do not uh, right. pledge, you know, allegiance to the flag or to any other uh, uh, aspect of this country, particularly allegiance. And, you know, and the first other group that comes to mind are Jehovah's Witness. Now, Jehovah's Witnesses, you know, they're always the butt of a lot of jokes, you know, and they, they are, they are you know, interesting people sometimes. But I got a lot of respect what? for them because, first of all, oh, yeah. yes, cause first of all, they soldier hard. You know, the sisters, oh, the, yes, the men, they soldier hard every Saturday morning. They knocking on your door and you call them all kind of names. Black and Hispanic. Come on now. But um, but they also are very staunch against pledging allegiance. And there's a very clear right. reason because of the definition of pledge and the definition of allegiance. And I'm going to get into that real right. quick. The actual definitions of pledge, it's a noun. The first and foremost uh, definition is a serious promise or agreement. The second right. definition is a promise to give money. Third, something that you leave with another person as a way to show that you will keep your promise to them. It's also a covenant. Right. Uh, the, and then allegiance is a noun. Uh, the obligation of a feudal vassal to his liege lord. I'm going to say that right. again. It is the obligation of a feudal vassal to his liege lord. Number two, the fidelity owed by a subject or citizen to a sovereign or government. And two uh, now 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 real quick. Yes, sir. Now you said to a, of a subject. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. That basically means somebody that you captured a conquer. Come on. And then when you go in the US Constitution, that we're not even considered real citizens uh in the US Constitution. So that that they, they, they can go ahead and kill black 
men and women, brown, uh, yeah, black men and women, you know, with immunity. Come on now. You know what I mean? Well, get off. Uh, you know, they judge us, you know, and treat us like animals when we kill one another. But like, like I said earlier, but if they kill one of us, they say, hey, he wasn't a citizen anyway. That's right. You know, he ain't nothing but a savage beast. They, you know, they out here teaching our people lies, talking about we come from Africa. Come on, come on. And we were swinging through trees with bones in our noses. So they treat us like that. Yes, sir. You know, but now that we are starting to wake up and they're educated, um, are starting to teach the masses of the starting to teach the masses of the people who are uneducated and people who are like symbols like a Colin Kaepernick are starting to to stand up. So we like, oh, now we got to shut him up. Right. You know, we got to do something right. to keep him away. You know what right. I'm saying? To where the, Colin Kaepernick is the new litmus test, like the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, you know, they 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 pick they educated elite black Negroes, the retired Negroes that was in the league back in the past, and they bring rest bringing them back, using them against Colin Kaepernick, people like Ray Lewis. But then, there you go. You got people like, uh, what's the Shannon Sharp? And he looked like a Muslim, too. Now. You look at him with the part <laughs> hair, he looked like an for a yes, while. But he's standing up for the cause, and, and, and he's putting the fire to these people because they're trying to use Colin Kaepernick like the litmus test, as they did the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, to see what Negroes is with. Colin Kaepernick and which Negroes are not with Colin Kaepernick because if you see they tried to uh they tried to crucify Shannon Sharp you know when he had the little with the uh, with the little Hennessy and the black and mild you know they tried to crucify that brother yes sir but that wasn't the whole purpose why they was doing that they knew that this man he gonna he's he's gonna speak truth to power yes sir so if more black people start to speak truth to power you know we can wake the uh, masses we can wake the masses of black people. Um, very fast. Yes, sir. And uh, and also I want to point out because I know either you know somebody that may be watching now or will be watching later uh, when when this is posted uh, after it's recorded, we're gonna have Christians, and I know it's, it's Christians out there who are looking at Colin Kaepernick. They looking at the Muslims, and they you know or even right. at uh, you know uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and saying you know why don't they just stand up for the flag? Ain't nothing wrong with that. It's just it's just football. Right. It's just you know I'm proud to be an American. And these are Negroes I'm talking about. America's past. Huh? So you know, but like we're taught in the Nation of Islam, you know, we teach from the Bible and Quran because. You know, right. uh, Christianity is the cemetery that our people are buried in, and the Bible is the right. tombstone uh, that they're buried under. So I'm going to reach in the Bible real quick, if you don't mind, and, right. and give Go this ahead, and straight from their Bible and, and tell you why we should not pledge allegiance. We shouldn't even take a knee. Your children shouldn't even be Come standing on, up. Be good. Come on, yes, sir, I'm going to start off with the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 4 and 5. This is from your Bible. This is, this is you know, for whoever's listening. This is not the, the Muslim Bible. This ain't the Farrakhan Bible. I mean, that sounds like a good idea. I would love to purchase the Muslim uh, or the Farrakhan oh, Bible. Come on. That would be, hey, be bomb. That would be fire right there. This is from your Bible. I should make this one. This is from my Bible. It says, Exodus 20, chapter 4 and 5, you must not make for yourself a carved image or a form like anything that is in the heavens above or that is on the Boy. earth underneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. And number five, you must not bow down to them, nor be induced to serve them, because I, Jehovah, your God, am a God exacting exclusive devotion. Exclusive right. devotion. But that ain't it, right. dear brother. That ain't it. Right. I'm going to drop one more on them. This is, this is uh, the book of Luke. Chapter four. Right. We we started off in the old testament. I'm gonna hit them with the new. Uh come on, you teach me. <laughs> chapter four, verse five through eight. So he brought him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the inhabited earth in an instant of time. And the devil said to him, I will give you all this authority and the glory of them, because it has been delivered to me, and to wh whomever I wish I gave it, I give it. You therefore. If you do an act of worship before me, this is the devil talking, all of this will be right. yours. And replied to Jesus, Jesus said to him, it is written, it is Jehovah, your God, you must worship. And it is to him alone right. you must render sacred service. So with that said, right. dear brother, 
you know, if you believe in God, particularly the Abrahamic understanding of God, which includes Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, then you should never stand up and salute this flag. You should right, never right. pledge allegiance. Allegiance means all allegiance, meaning you giving all your all your allegiance, right, all right. your, right. you know, uh, you're pledging 100% of yourself to whatever it is that you're pledging allegiance to. So you're not pledging allegiance to Christ, to Muhammad, Moses. When you stand up and you acknowledge that flag the way this cracker wants you to, then you are giving him and his creation. And, and, but see, Come real on quick. Now. Yes, sir. But see, that's the, that proves the hypocrisy of, a, of America Come on. because they say one nation under God. <laughs> but they didn't took the God part out. Oh man. They took God out of the schools. Yes, sir. They took God out of the church. Mm -hmm. They took God out of the workplace. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, sir. So so and then they put up the golden calf. They want us to idol worship. They want us to idol worship all of these athletes. Come on. All of these musicians. All of these actors, and they say, but 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 I thought it was one nation under God. Why am I pledging all of my allegiance to you? Come on. Why is because when God shows up, we won't be able to recognize God. Come on. You feel what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So that that proves America's hypocrisy that this is not a a, a country that's founded on God, built by God, that is for God. Everything about America is contrary. To God. Right. But, you know, and I also say this, you know, when you go to that, that Pledge of Allegiance, it saves God in the end. It, it, it mentions God at the end. But listen to what it says. One nation under God. When you're trying to get past something that's more powerful than you, usually you try to creep under it. And you try to undergird it and slide underneath it because, you know, if it sees you or if you try to walk on its level, it'll knock you down. So, they're actually telling the truth in that Pledge of Allegiance. This is a, a country that is one nation that's under God. It's not above God. It's not looking God in the eye. It's not truly, you know, living under God's law or rule. It's trying to get under him. It's trying to get past him by crawling beneath him. So it's, it's a lot of truth in that, if, if right. you want to look at it that way, is that this is a nation that's absolutely under God, completely under God. And everything right. it does is something that is beneath God. So, uh, so absolutely. Uh, right now, what I'm trying to do is find a question from any of our brothers or sisters that are online. If anybody has a question, first of all, you want to go to the Nation Town TV uh, website where we have it posted, and then go ahead and uh, and and uh, and post a question. But if you have anything to to, to say, brother Alfonso, go ahead, and I'm gonna wait to see if. A, if, if, if a decent question pops up, go ahead, dear brother. Um, yeah, you know, this, this has just been a godless nation. Come on. You know, and just based on the treatment of its uh, former slaves, you yes, know, sir. bears witness uh, to what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So, you know, we, we, we have to get some, I mean, Colin Kaepernick, whether if he get justice with the NFL or not, you know, it's just a, a learning lesson for black America to let black America know that your white American counterparts really don't give a damn about you. Right. You know what I mean? They don't give a damn about your athletes be or your actors and musicians because as soon as you fall out of favor with these white wealthy people, whether they Jew or Gentile, Come you on. know, they go, they, they're going to cut you off real quick. You know what I mean? It shows you that they, they, they didn't see. They want you to pledge allegiance to the flag, but they ain't go pledge allegiance to you. Come on, come on. You feel what I'm saying? And it's supposed to be a democracy. That's Is right. Is it really a democracy? No, sir. Now it's not a democracy by what they claim it, but it is absolutely a democracy. Uh, as the way the minister broke it down, or he broke down the actual, he, he literally broke down the word with a demo. Uh, which in Latin, if I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, I hope I get it correctly, the demo represents what it sounds like, a demon. And krasi is, demon. is always uh, a form of government of the people. So it is indeed a demon. And you're right. Krasi. You're right. right. It's, it's a misrepresentation right. yes, of the word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, I don't see any particular questions. Uh, on. I might not be looking at it right. You know, I'm new to this uh, this Facebook Live thing. 
But I don't see. Hey, but you're doing a great job. Oh, praise be to our Lord. You know, I got got my brother with me. You know, I'm backed by the minister, the Mach D, and the messenger right over my shoulder. So I'm, you know, I'm just trying to live up to it. Praise be to our Lord. But yes, sir, we're about to wrap it up, though. Um, you know, this will be posted on my page. I'm sure Brother Alfonso will also uh, post it on his page. But uh, but yes, one sir. last point I want to bring up, and this is going to probably ruffle some feathers. <laughs> but, you know, this is how we do. Come on, this, no, this, no, no, don't make them mad. Don't make them too mad. This is how we do, Brother Alfonso. When we on post, you know, and, you know, uh, when we just, you know. It, it gets heated. It gets heated, you know. But we throw it out there, them high explosives sometimes. You know, the minister right. The minister dropped a high explosive on us a few years ago. And it was explosive, even though it was a compliment. But it was explosive because, you know, sometimes compliments are harder to handle for people than uh, critique. And the minister made a comment that this current generation is the Joshua generation. And right. He wasn't just talking about young people, but he did mention that young right. young people today, you know, they're the they're some of the bravest, most fearless uh, people that that this this earth has ever seen. But they're not necessarily the wisest, and I'm paraphrasing our beloved minister. But since we are that Joshua generation, what I find funny, I'm gonna go back to where we started. You know, we both bore witness that we're participating in the NFL boycott and we're not watching NFL games. But I found it right. interesting that as the Joshua generation, as the, the, the fearless people that we're supposed to be, we're actually right now falling behind our predecessors when it comes to boycotting when necessary. Because our predecessors right. in the 60s Man, they walk to work. They walk miles to work to avoid getting on a bus. Right. Some, many of them lost their right. jobs. Now, let's be clear. Let's be clear. You know, people over the age of fifty, they, you know, they, they lie to you. Tell, you know, they all claim that they marched with Dr. King and and they was out there like that. Oh man, but, we had that experience. Yeah, but the, the the truth of the matter is, yes, sir, we did, we did. But the truth of the matter is, it was a small percentage of them. But the ones who did, they really sacrificed a lot. I mean, many of them right. literally got killed, got beat, you know, lost their jobs, lost their livelihood. And it was hard. You think it's hard for a black man to find a job today? Think about the 60s. Right. But we can't even turn the channel from a football game. Right. You know what I mean? We can't find something and, else to and watch. You know what it is, though? Yes, sir. What it is, you know, just as the Quran says that this world is built, built on sport and play. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? And then you have a lot of mothers raising their children to want to be athletes, right. want to be artists and musicians, yes, want to be actors. So they, this is the American dream, Man. you know, that I can grow up and I can blow up. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? You know, I can make it big. You know, nobody want to be scientists anymore. Come nobody want to uh, do horticulture. Nobody want to be farmers. Nobody want to be doctors. Nobody want to be lawyers and paralegals. You know, nobody want to... Nobody wanted uh, e the hard way. Everybody wanted the easy way. Everybody wanted to get rich and die trying uh, a story like 50 Cent. You know, some people even go out just because and get shot just because to say I got shot and then put out an album real quick and then expect to go platinum. Yes, sir. You know, you know it's all vanity. It's all built on vanity. So, so to, you know, just to turn off the TV and read a book, <laughs> they say reading is fundamental. Come on. You know what I mean? And we, and we need to be focuses on, focusing on building up our spirituality. You know what I mean? So we can strengthen our mentality because it's just a game at the end of the day. You didn't win nothing. You didn't win a Super Come on, Bowl. Man. <laughs> you didn't win a ring. You didn't make no money. So how are you actually benefiting from this? You know? Yes, sir. So I, I, I totally get and understand what you're saying, but we have to get back to those values that they had back in the 60s and the 50s and uh, back in those days. You know yes, what sir. I mean? Because it wasn't nothing to sit down and read a book back then. Yes, sir. Back then, the you it wasn't even color TVs back then. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? So they had their priorities straight, but we're now in a time that people don't want to boycott no more. Right. People don't want to sit in no more. Right. You know, but we say we the Joshua generation. We don't necessarily want to put the work in, but if we understand that 
the old ways didn't really get us nowhere because integration wasn't the greatest idea. Yes, sir. You feel me? So now we need to wake up and say, like, dang, like, we like we need to really do for self. We need to separate from these people, like Minister Farrakhan just recently said at the Holy Day of Atonement. Let's 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 try to separate, see what that's like. First, you know yes, what I sir. mean? Yes, because sir. integration, we, Mart, Martin integrated us in the burn, burning house. That's and right. He admitted that himself. Yes, sir. You know, so we take ourselves from away from the equation and say, you know what? We're going to put some young men to work. We're going to put them in construction. We're going to put them on some farmland. Yes, and we're really going to get take it seriously and build a nation because we. Just the food that they're giving us is killing yes, us. Yes, sir. You feel what yes, I'm saying? Sir. So we have to take our stomachs away from our enemies. Come on. Come you on know, now. And that's very, that's very important. So we don't get back to those basic fundamental values and just on how we eat. Come on. Just if we if we until we just get our diet right, when we get our diet right, we get our thinking right. Yes, sir. You know, our thinking is all the way up because we 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 piled up at the McDonald's drive thru. Piled up. You feel me? <laughs> the McDonald's yeah. drive thru is full. Yes, sir. You know, and they feeding you uh, uh body parts and stuff like yes, that. Sir. Come on now, we gotta we gotta get Flash back to the burger. old value. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the thing that comes to mind for me with that is, you know. You know, I really forced myself to really parse and study the Willie Lynch letter. And people can argue whether or not Willie Lynch ever existed. You can argue that. But there's too much proof today that proves that the Willie Lynch system was absolutely real, whatever name you want to put on it. Right. And one of the things that he pointed out as ways to divide one slave for another was take the slave that's from the plantation on the hill and put him against the slave that's on the smaller plantation in the valley and vice versa. Right. And that's essentially right. what we do when we watch sports. Because, okay, oh, yeah, if, if you got the L.A. Rams versus the New York Giants, you know, what do we right. really own in New York? What do we really own in Los Angeles? You know, and, Not, and, uh, and, and aside from, and in the NBA, you got one majority black owner, and that's, that's Michael Jordan, you know. And in the right. NFL, they're absolutely zero majority owners. So we get, I mean, I've seen, right. I've seen brothers come to fisticuffs, come to fights and barbershops over football, over an NFL right. team that, that none of us have any right. power over. Likewise. You know, and, and then we take city pride. You know, I'm from this part of the country. I'm from this city. So that's my squad. And, that's really and, and, and be ready to fight over something that you have no control of and you don't benefit from. And even the 80% black players that are in the league, once they sign that first contract, the first thing they always, they interview them at the draft every year, right? Right. The first thing right. they always ask them, what are you going to do with your first check? And the brother always says, I'm going to buy my mama or my grandma a house. Now, where is this house? Right. Where do they build this house? Right. Do they build it in South Central? Do they build it in the jungle? Do they build it in Southwest Atlanta? No, sir. Do they build no, it? Sir. No, sir. They built that house in the whitest neighborhood that they can find for their mom and their grandma to live. So these athletes that we rooting for, even though they're as black as you are, their money's not black. So as soon as they sign that first right. contract, Good all teach. of their money is going somewhere else. They're, like the minister said, their agent is white. Their, their lawyers are white. Their coaches are white. You know, and then their entourages are white. And then eventually their woman is white. So I mean then right. <laughs> so you know I'm if it ain't white, it ain't white. Right. And and I don't want to completely not because what Islam teaches against sport and play is not that, you know, if you watch a a, a football game, you watch a couple of first downs, you're going to hell. You know, that's not what, what Islam is saying. What Islam is saying is that that can be a form of of uh of polytheism. When you putting a God beside God, Idolatry. you know, so that's right. So that's particularly what Can it's I, saying. I just really quickly. Yes, sir. I, I quickly wanted to also add to that, you know, is that we are the richest, brokest people on the planet. Come on, man. You know, I mean, we got a two, we got a two billion, two trillion spending power. Come on. You know, a trillion dollar spending power. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? But some of us, like, we can't even get away from. You know, watching a little football here. Come on, we can't man. get away from eating pork. Come we on. can't get away from buying lotto tickets. Come on. We can't get away from buying alcohol and cigarettes. Just the little stuff right. that if we stop doing, that it can really hurt America's economy if we actually came together right. and say, you know what, not only 
I'm not just going to buy black because they just shot somebody black. I'm going to buy black because this is a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I want us to continuously have black-owned businesses and black-owned products. Yes, sir. So we get to that thinking because unity or unity is greater than an atomic bomb. Come on now. You feel what I'm Come saying? Come on now. So if you got 10,000 atoms, when you, when you crack in a single atom, it creates a major explosion. So yes, imagine sir. if you... Uh, crack 10,000 atoms. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have uh, you not, it's not just a destructive force when you crack an atom, but it's yes, also sir. a creative force. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? So our unity is more powerful than the atomic bomb. Yes, sir. And the man that, you know, according to our lessons, took one atom and cracked it into 10 million parts. Uh, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, I love it when he told us that if you continue to follow him, you'll have to tie a string around your finger just to even remember that this white man exists. And as you said, as you said, you know, if we just stop doing some of our vices, spending money on our vices, it could hurt this white man's economy. But even bigger right. than that, if we just started spending with each other, it would have the equal impact on our own economy. I mean, right. if we started spending money just in our own neighborhood, supporting blacks, sending our children to black schools, you know, every chance we get spend, spending our money in the blackest way possible, that would absolutely that would almost render the police brutality and, and everything that we're dealing with almost, you know, almost non-existent. It would still be happening, but we would have more money and more of wherewithal and more ability to actually fight back and do something. One of the reasons the police don't respect us, aside from just white supremacy, is the fact that we don't have any financial or political power. So we can't we can't right. help determine who the police chief is, you know, and it's not just about politics. We don't pay enough taxes. We're not a, a, a big enough a part of this society. I'm power enough. For yes, sir. So, you know, so dear brothers and sisters, all those who joined us today and those who are going to watch us later, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. But I want to uh, thank you all for joining us. I want to thank Brother Alfonso X, who I think just uh, just 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 powered off on us. You know, ran out of juice. Uh, but I want to thank that that dear brother for joining us. So we're gonna continue to do this, dear brothers and sisters. You know, whenever a topic, whatever questions or comments you have, feel free to do so, and uh, and we'll definitely let you guys know when we're gonna do this again. Uh, so I uh, leave you. Uh, as we greeted you in the words of peace, we said in the Arabic language of Assalamu alaikum.